Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. I'm here again with Steve. We're talking Final Cut Pro 10.1. We're really diving into the new library model and how it works. And specifically today, we're going to talk a little more about libraries themselves, right? Libraries themselves. Last week, we looked at how to import into a library and where the actual media is stored yes. within Final Cut and on the hard drive. Now we're going to look at uh, libraries as more of a general concept, yes, more of a kind of a, a container, a top-level container. How to work with them. Exactly. And what they are. And... So let's look at Final Cut. Uh, what we have here is a li new libraries pane, and in there are libraries. So this is a library, this is a library, this is a library. And within libraries are events. Yes. And within events are clips and projects. And projects. Right. We yes. already learned that from lesson, your lesson way back way a back couple, weeks, a couple ago. weeks ago. Yeah. So <laughs> let's look at how you create a library. I and mean, these are pre-existing, obviously, but if we want to create a new library. We go to the file menu and choose new library. Pretty Ooh, straightforward. Pretty straightforward. And we can go ahead and, and, and name this. I'm going to call this, let's say I was going to be working on a show about discovering the Southwest. I, I might... I might want to bring in all my media relate, related to that and the episodes in this one library. So I'm going to call this um, Discover the Southwest. Okay, And I'm going to be storing this to my media drive, and i got to make sure that uh, I don't have a pre-existing one, which doesn't look like it. Um, I'm going to save it there, but I want to bring up a point about libraries for a moment. Um, you could store them anywhere. They can be yes. stored on any drive, any, <laughs> any drive, any folder, wherever you want. It, it's great. Um, Last week, we talked about managed libraries versus external. Yes. And if you're doing a managed library, that simply means all the media is going inside the library yes. bundle. So if that's the case, you really do want to think about where your library is going to be. Right. I don't think you want it on your boot drive. That's, right. that's actually it's a very good point is to think about where you want your library to be. Um, and part of the, the answer to that is, well, am I going to be putting the media in it or not? Yep. So that drives the question. And just one more mention about that. You might think you have to put it in or you have to put it, put it externally. You can actually do a mixture. You can change your mind halfway through, and then you can always change it later. We'll talk about all that stuff later in terms of moving the media around. But once you've made your decision up front, you can absolutely change your mind later. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and save that library to that drive. And you'll notice there's the library right there, Discover okay. the Southwest. And by default, it creates an event. You can't have a library without at least one event. It has to work with one event. And uh, we're not going to import any media. I just want to show you how you could create that. And from this point forward, you can then create more events by... Uh, by right-clicking and choosing new event or option in, and then you have the option to, to name the event and then create a default project in, in there, which I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just showing that, that you, you can create events that already have an empty project okay. ready to go. But what you're bringing up is really important because you've created a library that's going to contain a bunch of events that are related to a specific production. That's right. Right? Okay. And so one way to kind of think about when would you create a new library? You know, why do you need a new library? Because you could put all your events in one library. Well, this is an episode. This is a show called Discover the Southwest. I may create an event. To, let's say I'm doing a, uh, something on Arizona. I yes. might call this uh, Arizona um, episode one. So I know that okay. any clips related to that particular episode would show up in that event. In, in that event. And all those, all those events for each episode go into this one library. That's right. And again, that's something you're free to change later if you if you want to reorganize things. So I'll just click OK, and uh, there's my event, episode one. And Excellent. There's a default event. It can be renamed. I can call this whatever, Utah, Utah, Utah episode two, and, and just keep going. Got it. Okay. So now let's look at opening a pre-existing library. Let's say I have a library. It's somewhere in my drive, and it's not open. And one of the beauties of the new library workflow is that I don't have to have all these libraries here all the time. Oh, this isn't everything. Oh my gosh. In the previous okay. versions, everything was loaded constantly yes. all the time. Yes, unless and, you use something like Event Manager to, to deal with but it. But it's always and, about performance because all that stuff has to get loaded into RAM. Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is select this and just right-click on it and choose Close Library. Done. And it's gone. Whoop, okay. Gone. It's so, gone. Fantastic. But then I can also open a library. Okay. So I go to the File menu and choose Open Library. Now, this is a list of, of recently opened uh -huh. libraries. Okay. And you, you're right there at it's your just, fingertips. It's just like you're in Pages or something. You're, it's a recent documents kind of thing. Recent documents. Yeah. Uh, I can choose one here or I can go to Other and okay. then navigate to one, which I'm okay. not going to do. I'm going to just pick one here because that's what I'm going right to open. Okay. So I'm going to choose Ripple Productions. And what that'll do is open this library. 
full of events, basically are um, personal projects, film projects I've been working okay. on, short films, music videos, what have you. And it's, and a, it's a big one, so it's going actually through and loading all those events. It's loading everything. So I can see right here one reason why you might not want all of those libraries loaded all the time. Right, so I can go through each event, each, each one has its own little, like here's my uh, time-lapse project on uh, San Francisco, I have something on Catalina, I have something on uh, a ghost, ghost town in Jerome. And Jerome. Yeah. So it's all organized by events within a single library called Ripple Productions. In fact, by the way, when you select the top level library icon and nothing else is selected, uh, you could view uh, you see everything, Final Cut will right? show, show, but more than that, it actually will break down your library, and you can actually see your events as as little subheadings. So, for oh, example, and you can close it up. It, I can oh. close these and open these, and uh, I can say, "All right, I'm not looking. I don't need to see all those clips. I just want to close it up, and I can only see uh, the events that I'm currently working with." So That's the, great because if you're looking for a certain clip, you don't have to select each event as you go through to look through it. You select the overall library. And you can see, see there it is. all the clips within that library. And it tells you how many clips are in it. So I don't, may not want to open uh, this Catalina one that's got 121 yeah. clips. And then, of it. course, if you searched, it would search on everything in the library, and not everything. just that event. Exactly. Fabulous. Yeah. So also, uh, you can go to the task menu, and you can group your clips by you know date imported, what have you here. Yes. Um, but I just want to show you, by default, it, it creates a nice organizational uh, structure right out of the box. And I noticed when it's organized this way, when you pop one of these events open, the projects associated with that event are right up top. That's right up top. Yes. You can just then double click the project and now you have full access to the project, project and the timeline. It's just fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the library itself. If I right click on the library and choose Reveal and Finder, I'm taken to the actual library bundle, which Apple's calling a bundle. Okay. It's a package. Basically what a bundle is, is a, a secured or a, uh, a folder that's, um, what do I want to say? Um, it's not locked down, but it's protected. It's protected. It's protected. Okay. So you can't so you, just you, open it. I can't you, just open it like this folder. Right. You can't uh, just double click it on or something. There's right. no disclosure triangle. No so disclosure. So you have to actually show the package contents. Okay. So it's designed, it's really designed so that you aren't really supposed to go inside yeah, it. Yeah, and you don't really need and to. You shouldn't need to. You know, shouldn't need to. But point is, and I'm not going to go through every single option here, but yes. notice all these events here, second impressions, base city bustle. All they are is folders okay. within the library bundle. Uh, so each so, event is a folder right. in the library and bundle. If you open it up, I can I can actually look at the original media here. I Got, here's the media, the media for these clips for this particular um, event. event, right? Uh -huh. And all of these are managed. I'm pretty sure all of these are managed. In other words, we're not seeing so you're, any you're seeing clips. the actual media, the actual there, media, the yeah. exactly. But just to an earlier point, you could see some mix of sim clips and actual media in there. That's correct. And you can always change that, which we'll talk much later about in, in media right. management. Right. Excellent. Uh, yep. The other thing I want to talk about is um, launching and opening your libraries. So what I'm okay. going to do is, well, let me show you the easy way for this. Yes. Is pretty, this is pretty cool. I'm going to just close these up so you can see. I'm going to go to the Finder and uh, hide others, and I'm going to open up this media drive. This is pretty darn cool. Uh, here I have a library called, um, let's see, what have I haven't opened yet? Grand Amount. I haven't opened that. Okay. So I'm going to just grab that library, yeah. dro drop it on the Final Cut Pro icon, okay. and give it a second. And it automatically brings that it library in. There wow. it is, ready wow. to go. So that so that's a great way instead of doing the file open library. But also, if you haven't launched Final Cut yet, and you don't, and you know the last time you had all these libraries open, right. you could just choose the libraries that you want and drag them on that. In fact, let's let's do that really quick. I'm going to okay. quit Final Cut. Final Cut. Okay. And down to Final Cut, I'm going to hold down the Option key and click on the Final Cut Pro icon in the dock. Okay. So what's going to happen is Final Cut Pro with the Option key held down. Um, is going to give me a window that lists all my recently opened libraries. And ah, I can actually great. select one, but here's what's cool. I can command click and select multiple libraries okay. like this. Or, you know, maybe I've got a client in the room. I don't want them to see any of my work. I don't want, I just, look, I want to start completely fresh with yes. a brand new library, none of those things showing. I just click new. And uh, I can then give it a, li I can give it a name, um, new, or I can just a fresh library or whatever. Uh, and I'm going to save that in my media drive, and uh, save. And when Final Cut Pro launches, I only have one library and nothing else. Nothing else. So it's going to launch really quickly because it's not loading all the events associated with all these libraries you're not using. Exactly. So I love that tip where you can just drag from the Finder right onto the oh, icon. It's so that's, that's a really quick way. Excellent. So there you have it. Excellent. So that's a, a great overview of, of the basics of working with libraries. And uh, stick around. Next week, we'll go and talk a little bit more about this. If you really want to get all this information in much more detail, you can check out our Final Cut Pro 10.1 in-depth training at rippletraining.com that goes through uh, 
all of this as well as all the new editing workflow enhancements. So Steve, thank you. And thank you once again for watching MacBreak Studio.